1918, the French mathematician Gaston Julia published an innovative analysis of rational quadratic functions, revealing that very small changes to initial conditions could radically alter their behavior. This groundbreaking discovery lay dormant for 60 years until Benoit Mandelbrot began to visualize Julia's sets. Rather than spending months completing the exhaustive calculations this required, Mandelbrot transferred the tasks of his mind's eye to a computer program. The resulting unprecedented images became iconic and cemented Mandelbrot's legacy as the founder of fractal geometry. There are, and always will be, places we cannot go and things we cannot see. But instead of relying solely on mind's eye visualizations, scientists now frequently use supercomputers to house their virtual experiments. Beyond induction and deduction, this is a third way of doing science, and we are only beginning to realize its revolutionary possibilities. What are the origins of life on Earth? There are few ways to reliably investigate this question. We can't return to the young, inhospitable Earth where life began some four billion years ago. Fortunately, efficient cellular structures and processes are passed down to us intact within each living cell through the eons. The most significant and baffling of these ancient structures is the ribosome a complex molecular machine that makes proteins by translating the four-letter genetic code into an alphabet of 20 amino acids. In the last decade, researchers mapped the ribosome's structure, atom by atom. But this was not enough to reveal the ribosome's secrets. The constant motions of its building blocks of RNA and protein are crucial to its function, and there is no known way to physically observe these microscopic dynamic processes. With computer interpolation between experimentally derived static snapshots, Scientists can see the ribosome as they need to, in motion. By closely examining the ribosome, scientists believe they can determine the relative ages of its components and estimate how its entire structure gradually evolved. This record-breaking 2.64 million atom simulation, produced by Kevin Sanbonmatsu and his co-workers at Los Alamos National Laboratories, required more than six months of supercomputer calculation. The total simulated time? 20 nanoseconds. An all-atom simulation was also used by Klaus Schulten, Peter Fredolino, and Anton Arkhipov at the University of Illinois in their recreation of one of the smallest known viruses, the satellite tobacco mosaic virus. The virus looks stable, but in fact its protein casing can pulse in and out asymmetrically, as if it were breathing. Other viruses also wiggle manically, and this motion can tell researchers how the virus can assemble and disassemble itself, information that is vital to preventing and treating viral infections. The team has also modeled portions of a flagellum, the microscopic whip-like structure that bacteria use to propel themselves through liquid. The simulation revealed previously unknown behavior, showing that the solvent surrounding a microbe intimately influences the function of its flagella. Another complex, poorly understood puzzle is the problem of turbulence. Turbulence is fundamental to many important physical processes, the motion of water molecules, the evolution of weather patterns, and the motion of matter within galaxies, to name a few. Scientists at the University of Utah's Center for the Simulation of Accidental Fires and Explosions have developed novel processing and visualization techniques to better understand how chaotic systems like turbulence behave. Here, we see a jet fuel fire-induced critical rupture of a steel container filled with plastic bonded explosive, with the temperature shown from cool blue through hot red. There are 2.8 million particles in this simulation. To mimic reality, the simulation accounts for the physics of the fire the shifting mechanical properties of the container as it gradually heats and ruptures, the turbulent mixing of the explosive within the flames, and the ultimate detonation. In addition to the minute, simulations can also help scientists envision the massive. One of the strangest predictions of Einstein's theory of general relativity was that very massive objects like pulsars and black holes would radiate gravitational waves, which don't really travel within space. They are distortions of space itself, like ripples on water. To aid the ongoing efforts to observe gravitational waves, a team of computational astrophysicists led by Joan Centrella of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center has simulated the merger of two equal mass black holes to find the telltale patterns, or waveforms, of the resultant gravitational waves. Here, at the moment these black holes coalesce, their peak production of gravitational waves releases more energy than all the stars in the visible universe combined. Some problems are simply too vast and complex for even the most brilliant human mind. As computer simulations improve, scientists will be able to better understand these problems, ask deeper questions, and reveal, for all to see, 
more of the universe's dynamic beauty.